Hi, this is Tamara Nunez, and today we're going to talk about Windows File and Folder Permissions. First, let's talk about what a file and a folder is. Um, a file could be something like a Word document that you might have saved on your computer, a PowerPoint slide presentation, um, programs that are actually installed on your um, computer. You may want to um, talk about pictures or songs that you have on your computer, videos, anything like that would be considered a file. It's something that's inside of a folder that um, we're going to be talking about being able to share between computers today. Um, a folder is what we call a directory or it could be a subdirectory if it's located inside of it's like a folder inside of another folder. Um, it's where these files are stored or where your programs are stored, where your pictures and your songs and your music, things like that are all stored inside of folders. Why are permissions important? Well, <coughs> permissions can restrict access to confidential information. Like if you worked in an office or somewhere and you didn't want everyone looking at everybody's payroll data or different things like that. Um, you can also like keep people you know how there are some people that like to get in there and mess around and maybe delete something that they're not supposed to um, you don't want to give everybody the um, ability to do something like that on your computer or in an office environment you know you certainly don't want employees and they're messing around maybe doing things they're not supposed to and maybe deleting something that they don't need to be deleting um, you can also like share your files through a network or just share them on the same computer or different things like that that you um, maybe you want to share a document that everybody can see or pictures that you have on your computer you want everybody to be able to look at them like your kids or your spouse or whoever um, and then there may be some that you don't want anybody to see so you might want to restrict the ability to look at them um, so you know you can have files on there that um, each person can use and they can all sign on under a, on a, under a distinct name whereas they don't they don't have access to everything on your computer but they can have access to the things that you allow them to have access to so what is a user there are accounts that you use to sign on a computer so you can set up a user account for each person that you want to like maybe your children or for your spouse or whoever like we talked to before or you can you know at a job site you may have um, one department signing on under one name somebody else signing on under, diff under a different name and each of them have different programs and things that they have access to your different types of users that you would use would be administrators which automatically have full control over everything they can do anything to the computer they're the people that are able to move and delete and do manipulate the computer in any way then you have a guest user that's automatically set up on your computer but they have limited access to to programs and things then there's a standard user which is pretty much what, what we're going to be working with today that um, the administrator has to set up the standard user account so how do we create a user account <clears throat> we'll have to go to the control panel and then we'll go to the add remove user accounts so we're going to try that right now okay let's set up our user account first we need to go to our control panel so if you get down here and click on the windows button and we can go to control panel then we need to go up here where it says add and remove user accounts so we'll click on that and then it's going to bring up this menu and it's going to show you the users that are already on your account and see there's the guest account that I was talking about mine is actually turned off um, and I am signed on under Tamara as an administrator um, so what we need to do now is come down here to create a new account so we'll click on that then you're going to give the the account a name let's just do test and see right here it gives you the option of giving it a standard user or administrator well we don't want to give this person full control so we don't want to put it as an administrator we want to be able to give the permissions and tell it what we want it to do so um, we're going to leave it as standard user and then click on create account 
and see there is our our test standard user um, and so now anyone can come in and sign on under that um, username and have access to any of the files and folders that we have out there that are um, shared um, and shared through this computer okay now that we've learned about users and we've learned about um, setting up user accounts let's talk a few minutes about permissions and what different permissions there are out there and what they allow a, a user to do so you can set a permission for a file or for a folder so the first permission we're going to talk about is the read permission and that will let um, if you put a read permission on a folder it'll let a person view and list the files and the subfolders inside of that folder and if you put read permission on a file it will permit the viewing or accessing of the files contents if you give a person or a user a write permission that will let um, them in a, inside of a folder to add files and subfolders inside that folder and if it, you have write permissions on a file it will allow them to write to that file um, with a read and execute permission on a folder um, it will allow the user to view and list the files and the subfolders as well as executing the files this is normally inherited um, when I say inherited that means when the folder is actually created um, it automatically has this type of a permission so it's inherited from um, the actual program once it, once it's once it's um, created so on the file if you have a read and execute permission on there it permits the viewing and accessing of the files contents as well as the executing of the file and if you have a list folder contents permission on a folder it will allow viewing and listing of files and subfolders as well as executing of the files and this is also inherited and on a file well that's not um, applicable the modify permission um, on a folder that would permit reading and writing of files and subfolders and it also allows deletion of the folder um, and on a file that's going to permit reading and writing of the file and it also allows deletion of the file now if you give full control permission to a folder or a file that pretty much gives you access to everything and you can do anything to that folder or file which is reading writing changing and deleting files and subfolders so you have to be careful when you give someone full control over something because they can do anything to it things to remember when you give um, the read permission you will need a read permission to run a program and it's required to access the des desktop shortcut and the program so if you have a, des a shortcut on your desktop to be able to actually run that program you will need at least the read permission on that folder on the right um, permission if you if you have the right permission you can still delete contents inside of a folder so you have to kind of be careful when you're giving out the right permission um, and if you give full control like we talked about before the user can delete files inside the folder regardless of the permissions placed on the files so if you have like you restrict permission on an actual file on um, a picture or whatever if that if you have full control on the actual folder where that picture is placed inside um, they can still the full control over the folder overrides whatever you have put on the file so you need to make sure that you put the permission on the folder um, so that that will control also the file that's inside that folder so how do we set permissions? Um, I'm using Windows 7, so we're going to talk about the way to do it in Windows 7, which is pretty much the same thing with other Windows programs. But I think they've um, done things a little bit easier with Windows 7 because they have a share with menu um, that kind of helps helps you out and 
setting permissions up and things. Um, you can also do it through folder properties, which is the way it was done before Windows 7 came out, I believe. Um, and there's also the advanced sharing that we can work with, and that can help you to add users 